This video is another in the series of many lectures to support the My Sociology textbook and is on the topic Micro Sociology versus Macro Sociology. In Chapter 2 of the textbook, you learned that sociologists and sociology examine society at different levels. At the macro level, sociology examines society as a whole looking at the big picture. Think of a telescope as a tool for examining society. At the micro level, sociology examines society in small groups and social units that exist within a larger system. For example, if a sociologist was examining the family at the macro level, then the sociologist would consider issues of the family as an institution in society, not an individual family like the Jones family or the Smith family, but the family as an institution in America. A question, an example of a question that might be asked at the macro level about the family would be, how does the family as an institution contribute to the overall structure of society? So macro level sociology often examines the structure of society as a whole. If we were to examine the family from a micro perspective, we would have to settle on a specific small group or social unit within the family to ask a question about. For example, we might ask about couples within a marriage, which is a social unit within that larger system of the family. And we might ask a question like, what types of interaction between couples tend to lead to divorce? In this case, we're not looking at the structure of society as a whole, but we're looking at the interaction that happens between uh, small groups and individuals within the family. So it's a micro level assessment. So to summarize, the macro sociology examines society as a whole while microsociology examines small groups and social units within the larger structure. In sociology, there are three main paradigms that are often used to, as mo a paradigm is a model for explaining something. And the three models that are often used are structural functional theory, social conflict theory, and symbolic interaction theory. Two of these paradigms, structural func functional theory, and, symbol and, and conflict theory are macro level in their analysis. In other words, they look at the structure of society as a whole. The other paradigm called symbolic interaction theory examines small groups and social units within the society. So it looks at society from a micro level approach. Let's look at each one of these briefly. The structural functional theory or paradigm is macro level and this paradigm looks at the whole society at once and ass uh, assumes that society tends toward stability and in order to maintain that stability certain social structures or social institutions emerge within the society. An example of a social structure or institution would be the family, or the education system, or the health care system. These institutions emerged because they have a role to play in keeping the society stable and keeping it running smoothly. And they tend to work together with each other, the different social structures, each performing their function uh, and in so doing, keep society stable. So when a sociologist starts with that assumption in examining some phenomenon in society, they're using the structural functional paradigm and they are looking at society from a macro level point of view. Conflict theory also uses the macro level model, but conflict theory starts with the assumption that conflict and competition are normal parts of the structure of society. 
And rather than focusing on institutions or social structures, conflict theory examines various interest groups or various categories of people that are in conflict over limited resources. And those resources often are described as wealth, power, or prestige. It may appear, society may appear to be stable, but that stability is caused by the subordinate groups acquiescing to the requirements of the dominant groups. So the dominant groups and the subordinate groups are in competition for who controls the structure of the society. And it seems to run smoothly because everyone must acquiesce to the desires of the dominant group. Which group is dominant changes over time. And so the structure of society changes to reflect those changes. A simple example that you can find in everyday life would be the kind of competition that goes on between various political parties during an election. Each party wants to gain power and to do that they put forth their candidate uh, and try to get their candidate elected because they believe if their candidate is elected their party will have more control over how society operates or the structure of the society at the macro level. Finally, the symbolic interaction theory is the only paradigm that uses the micro level model. We could say that it's not one theory but a collection of many theories that all use symbolic interaction to explain society. And instead of focusing on the structure of society, a symbolic interaction theory focuses on small groups and the meanings that those groups place on their behaviors and the behaviors of others. For example, small groups of people define situations in certain ways that they agree upon and that agreement becomes a social reality for the group. So that when someone violates the rules that the group has agreed on, they may be punished in some way. Or they may be rewarded if they comply with the rules the group has agreed on. While another group somewhere else may have a different set of rules that they have agreed on and, and a different type of social reality that they've created. All the simple rules that we live by every day sociologists call norms, are created this way. For example, if it's polite to open the door for an elderly person, that idea, that norm, is something that came to be agreed upon by people in the society, and then it became a social reality that that's the way individuals are supposed to behave. If somebody behaves differently, others may, and other people observe that behavior, they may describe the person as rude or acting inappropriately. And the, the gossip about a person who acts inappropriately is in itself a social sanction or a punishment. This video has been part of a series of many lectures by David Strickland in support of the My Sociology textbook.